Was he taking DNA from Jesus? Yep. yep. In order to make a, an army of clones? Oh, uh, don't tease me because I was so hoping this movie was going to finish with them having to fight a bunch of evil <laughs> Jesus clones. Yes! Thank you. That's an amazing uh, movie. They had such a good twist here they could have done. It's the only know, promise the, the movie Jesus. makes that it doesn't deliver on. Oh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Could have been so cool. It'd be rare if they just found out Jesus was the real killer of Nicole Simpson and Ron Goldman. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God awful movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host, Heath Enright, and sitting about 600 miles to my left is my good friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, welcome back. Thank you, Heath. You know who's a great actor? Who's that? Heidi Montag, Heath Enright. <laughs> 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 Wanted to see way more yeah. of her after the hills. Yeah, absolutely. And her husband, <laughs> Spencer Pratt. Yeah, they're doing great. <laughs> they're crushing it. She's going to be in this movie. And <laughs> sitting somewhere better, I must assume, is our guest maskist and... Stand-up comedian Johnny Taylor, who's had two different number one comedy albums on iTunes and Amazon, and is also a writer for Hard Times. Johnny, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. It's uh, it's good to be here. Fantastic. And what a movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about it right now. I'm not getting any. I'm very confused. I'm very, very confused. I've, I've been thinking about it since I've watched it. So. It was <laughs> baffling. Well, Stay all right. <laughs> Let's get right into it. Johnny. What are we going to be breaking down today? So we watched Assassin 33 AD. <laughs> uh, just the title alone gives you a little bit of a clue. So silly. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's the story of how a radical group goes back in time and decides to let Hitler live, <laughs> but go back further <laughs> and kill Jesus. <laughs> yes, he does. That's what they landed on to do with their Whew. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the pitch? <laughs> this movie. It's like it's a time travel movie. Hear me out. Okay. I know it's been done, but we're going to go back and kill Jesus. You're, but, okay. <laughs> that, uh, uh, we'll, we'll circle back to that. You were thinking not kill Hitler, though. You're going straight back <laughs> past that. Is that what you said? Yeah. I mean, I figure if Jesus doesn't live, how's Hitler going to live? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> that happened, though. That happened in real that was reality. The and they made yep, this movie. for sure. It had yeah. to. Wow. They, they, they somehow made this movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Eli, tell us how bad was this movie? Well, if you love quantum mechanics and obscure time travel theory, but you wish fat guy in a red hat would take a crack at him, <laughs> you will love this movie. This is the dumbest guy you know in the dumbest universe you know making a time travel movie, and I loved every second of it. <laughs> that is correct. Yes, very much Josh Fowerstein trying to make a time travel movie. And is there anything you guys would like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I, I went with best bad crying. Ooh, yeah. yes. Okay. <laughs> it, it becomes almost a through line in the movie <laughs> of just people not even being able to summon any type of emotional wherewithal. It's, it's just like, have you ever had anything bad happen to you? Like, go back there. And they couldn't do it. They were just like, no, man, I, I, I got to just. And then finally, I mean, we'll talk to it uh, near the end of the movie. I'll bring it up again. But there is a scene where they must have just splashed this girl with water. On the face. <laughs> and we're like, here, we got we to somehow make this seem real. It's fucking incredible. Oh, yes. it really is. One time we do get crying. It's Heidi Montag. And she's crying because God loves her. And that's it. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go with best worst countdowns. So the main bad guy keeps setting up these big threats where he's going to shoot somebody if he doesn't get the information he needs. Oh, something like that. yes. And the first time this happens, he's like, okay, I'm going to kill your mom in seven Six. <laughs> but, and everybody's like, sorry, uh, we'll do the countdown in a second. Just really quick. You're doing a countdown from seven? You pick <laughs> seven? <laughs> and he's like, fine, fine. And he does another one soon after that. And he agrees to start on five like a human fucking being. 
But then there's another one at the end and he starts on six. I genuinely yep. had to pause. I was laughing so hard at the six count after dwelling on the sevens for so long. It was the best. Also, just the, the idea that we're going to do a countdown to killing your parents. It's like, we're not watching the fucking ball drop on New Year's <laughs> Eve. <laughs> yeah, it was a weird threat that like somehow it'd be worse if it was delayed by seven more seconds. Hey, man, did you set up confetti? <laughs> no, no. I was going to go with best, worst, subtle, unsubtle hate of Muslims. So, oh, yeah. right. Unsubtle, I think, is the word. Yeah. Yeah. The entire conceit of this movie is that if Muslims got anywhere near time travel, they would <laughs> kill Jesus because yep. they hate Jesus, according That's to this movie. film. But the film is very clearly trying to dance around their blatant hatred of Muslims. So they'll just keep being like, they'll throw in little sentences here and there being like, man, these Muslims, they just can't get enough of this murdering. <laughs> right. My friend Harik, though, is really nice. Right. It's, <laughs> we'll get to it. I won't spoil it, but we'll get to their apologetics. It's fantastic. <laughs> the movie even confuses itself at one point. A Muslim character is like, hold on, but isn't Jesus a prophet in like our thing? Cut. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I love that part that they use that guy as like the weird baby face character of like, hey, listen, well, to be fair, he is a prophet. Like they were like, we got to be a little factual here. Right. Because <laughs> if we don't have this guy telling us Jesus was a prophet in Muslim, the Muslim religion or Islam, we would have no idea why they wanted to kill Jesus. <laughs> right, right. We'd be so confused. That really tied the plot together, the fact that they added that. That was important. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, I'll ask what the fuck is happening. And hopefully Johnny and Eli can explain the movie. <laughs> All right. I don't think I can, but I will try. <laughs> cool. Eli will explain the movie? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the first writer's room meeting for Assassin 33 AD. Sorry for the, the delay this morning. Uh, I got stuck in the revolving door for a little while, but for a long while. It was, it was a while. Oh, me too. Yeah, those things are hard, right? Yeah. Okay, so this is a Christian time travel movie about Muslims who go back in time to kill Jesus Christ. Right. So the scientists who made time travel in the movie, they have to go back in time to stop them. Wait, but but if they did that using time travel, then won't they not need to do it? Oh, right. Right. But then if they didn't do it, the Muslims would go back in time. Oh, yeah. OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got it. So so then the scientists would go back in time to stop them. And then if they succeeded, they wouldn't need to again. So, right. So if they do, they don't, mm -hmm. which means they do. Yes. N no. What? You guys, this movie stuff is hard. Totally. Right? What is happening? This is Impossible. so difficult. I mean, not like revolving door hard, but yeah, like hard. Thinky. <laughs> and we're back. And we open this one up with some epic, like, battle scene music. But we're watching just, like, a mid-sized sedan driving down the street. <laughs> <laughs> the music did not line up. It basically required that Thor would jump out and shoot lightning from his hammer or something like that. But it's just uh, Karen and Chad driving in their practical commuter vehicle with their two daughters. That's all we see. <laughs> And the mom here is Heidi Montag, who I spoke about at the beginning. That is correct. Yep. Yeah. And and, and Heidi Montag cannot act for shit. No, no she cannot. <laughs> Nopers. Not at all. <laughs> it, it seems like she is real time translating her lines from Italian into English as she yeah. says them. <laughs> it's crazy. The whole scene is basically her fake crying. And it's the worst fake crying I've ever seen. And I've seen a million people pretend to cry. <laughs> yeah. It's so rough. And it starts with a VO from her before we zoom into the car. And she says, we don't realize it's her, though. She says, like, there has to be a reason he sent us here. 
And then we zoom into the car and her husband driving, sitting right next to her is like, hey, can, can you stop talking like you're a narrator? What, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> and, she just uh, keeps going, in a world where my husband yeah. <laughs> won't signal before he <laughs> changes lanes. Again, honey. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Karen and Chad. I was close, though. This is Brant and Diane. Brant's <laughs> going to be a semi-main character here. Everyone in this movie has one letter away from a normal name, right? Totally. Everyone's named Brant or Devlin or <laughs> Cage or something. It's, and no one has the normal name you first hear when their name is announced. Yeah. Right. There's also a Ram. He needs several letters before he gets to a name <laughs> and they, they get, get creative. But yeah, yeah the, there's a Ram Goldstein. We'll get there. So... We're just getting a little exposition here. Brant might as well be like, I'd like to exposit now. And he just says <laughs> out loud, apropos of nothing, I went from saving an embassy and killing terrorists to being head of security at a research lab. I am a protagonist, just so everybody knows. <laughs> and he might as well throw in a Benghazi reference here. Be like, and by the way, remember when Hillary Clinton tried to murder me in Benghazi? <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> and then this is when Heidi Montag tries to fake cry and it's absolutely terrible. He doesn't understand why. And yeah. she's like, oh no, I'm just, I'm just crying because I was thinking about how God loves me. And then <laughs> hit by a truck, hit by a truck. <laughs> Seconds later, giant, <laughs> murk, murk, whoosh, the whole car gets flipped over. It's absolutely like this, this was such a good open. Keith oh. and I wrote simultaneously in our notes. And this is my favorite movie. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, I, I was like, crash. Wow. God really does work in mysterious ways. <laughs> that one's fucking, mis I got to give it to you. That one's a thinker. That, that is tricky. <laughs> so now we get Brant waking up after the crash. He's just lying there on the road and he sees the car and he starts kind of crawling towards it. The, the car's flipped upside down and presumably the family's in there. And then immediately the car explodes. The car explodes. <laughs> But my real deep so question happy. is, why can't this actor crawl? I watched this scene like four times in a row because there's something wrong with his crawl, but I don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah. What, what was the director yelling here? Was he just like, <laughs> make it look like you're bad at crawling. <laughs> <laughs> you remember Smeagol? You're doing it. I don't know. <laughs> Stop being human. Your crab really walk to be towards your family. Human. You've seen that movie, Human Centipede, right? Getting that. <laughs> Just try to Let's inch you to that your space. way away from the exploding <laughs> car. So we get the family getting blown up here. Obviously, just giant tragedy again. I was thinking at this point, like, all right, we're just going to watch this guy live through agony for two hours, and I'm going to be so happy. And I wasn't that far off. You were not, not. No. Right. I just remember thinking like, wow, Heidi Montag was in this movie <laughs> <laughs> for 12 seconds. <laughs> right. So the family's dead. Very sad. <laughs> and now we cut over to a classroom during the end of some kind of physics test. It's the, okay, I'm going to save everyone an infinite amount of confusion because they will spend most of this scene talking about it. This is apparently the Kobayashi Maru physics test yeah, right. <laughs> that no one ever gets a good grade on. But we want to establish that the main character, who Heath has already told us his name, Ram, Ram Goldstein. Goldstein. That's correct. Because violence Jewish was taken. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> but we find out that he's like a super genius. He goes to hand in his test and he... He bumps into one of the women who was also taking the test. This is Amy Lee. She's going to be a big character, too. And then out of nowhere, he's just like, sorry, I bummed into you. I went to MIT. I'm very smart. I it's do amazing. contract work out of my basement now. And Im <laughs> immediately she's like, so you, you live in your mom's basement. Cool. cool. <laughs> she also says he's like, oh, this test was really easy. And she says, oh, yeah, if you're so smart, how come I haven't heard of you? And I just wrote my notes. Okay, like, what? we as a society have heard of one smart guy, and he's dead now. So, like, there's no reason why you would know. I don't know. Like, he's on the cover of People for being smart. <laughs> Listen, People Magazine, 1968, MIT valedictorian. Well, salutatorian, but, you know, I was for <laughs> half the year. It, read a book, a magazine, whatever. Oh. 
But she ends up asking him out to dinner here, but he doesn't get it. And I, I, I understand. Like, just be clear. Well, to be fair, neither of them get it because this, this dialogue's insane. She goes, I bet you dinner that he didn't ace that test. And he goes, okay, but we won't have the scores for like a couple of weeks. And she's like, oh, uh, get the hint. And he's like, that's not a hint. It's just, you lied. <laughs> you said a bad way. I just wish you weren't me. a liar. <laughs> wish you didn't lie. Okay. I remember thinking like, this was like the most unlikely date ever. I was like, how did they, <laughs> they were both so bad at speaking to each other. I was like, how did they ever figure out that this was a date? <laughs> this was rough. And then we cut over to the date. We're in, well, his mom's basement where Ram <laughs> decided the date should begin. And just side note for anybody, don't go on dates that start in basements. Just that's, yeah. you, 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 you drop right out at that point if there's any mention of going to a basement. Yeah, I wrote in my notes, she's in his basement because she's serial killing on easy mode. <laughs> <laughs> and his first recommendation is, hey, what if we skip the dinner that I agreed to pay for at a restaurant and I microwave some steaks that I have yeah. ready right here? <laughs> what a dumb fuck. <laughs> I was like, let's meet in this obvious soundstage. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where we get our first hint of the Christian movie here. She stops before they eat to say grace. But I will say, we've seen a lot of this, seeing 245 Christian movies, where, oh, the, the non-Christian doesn't know what grace is. This is the first time someone said grace, and it's been misunderstood to be a kiss. Right. Never, <laughs> never has grace ended up in a three-way with God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's like wait hold on before we eat and he's like kiss you now and she's like nope nope we, <laughs> we we say grace and i was just like oh man i'm diving out the non-existent window of this basement here just smashing <laughs> into the wall over and over i'll get it i'll get it i'll get it i'm gonna get out i'm gonna get out but apparently by the end of it they're dating <laughs> yep yeah, they move fast they might as well put up a title card like a silent film, yada, yada, yada. They're the romantic interests. We're right. the main characters established. Oh and from there, we cut back to Brant, who's now in a very tragic spiral of depression from his dead family, which they've represented by the two beer bender that he's on. <laughs> <laughs> Get two PBRs and me shit starts getting wild. <laughs> To be fair, it's quarantine right now when we're recording this episode, so Brant looks like everyone I know in the United right. States. That's fair. <laughs> Except with way less beers. I've yeah. been Brant so many times. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm guessing, though, you wouldn't keep your kid's doll, your dead child's doll right there to just, like, like put her hair onto the doll and <laughs> stroke it during your second beer. It's just very... <laughs> Very high risk behavior. <laughs> it's very off. And then, of course, we have some fantastic, almost shooting himself back and forth here. <laughs> oh, yeah. This almost went from zero to short film really quick. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great, actually. Oh, incredible. Yeah. But again, a first for us and part of what makes this movie so excellent when he decides not to kill himself, he right. throws the gun. And I wanted so badly for it to accidentally go off and shoot him. Oh, I know. We, we all did. All four people that have watched this movie wanted that to happen. Yes, absolutely. But this is his big atheism moment. Right. So he was a Christian before this, and he's thinking about killing himself, and then he's like, nope, I'm not a coward. But then he starts giving God a speech like, hey, man, can I give you a quick note? You're really bad at being God. You know what? <laughs> I'm not Christian anymore. And he takes right. his, like, Benghazi award plaque that he has and he throws it in his fire and he, he quits the monotheism. So he's an atheist now. Yeah, it's so weird because it, it, it's like he didn't, he's never read the Bible. It's like he's so clearly Job in the scenario. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, no, God has done this before. He's taken entire families. He's made it worse for other people. Dude, just read the book that you like. <laughs> yeah, just be grateful you haven't gotten the boils yet. But I, I want to talk about this plaque for just half a second. It's very obviously like a real plaque that this actor cares about because what he does is he takes the plaque down and then incredibly gingerly sets it like 
halfway into the fireplace and then it immediately cuts so he can get <laughs> Paw Paw's medals out of the fire. What's his GED? Can you put that into the fire like it says in the script? Fuck you! It's serious. It's worth a lot of money, asshole. Just cut right before I'm about to put it in. Yeah. <laughs> So that very tragic atheism conversion scene ends. And now we're in a science lab with Amy and Ram. And we know it's a science lab because of the nonsense math equations oh, that are on a whiteboard. It's so good. I was furious. Apparently, <laughs> apparently the volume of a cylinder is crucial to like national security. They're in this like <laughs> lockdown lab. It's so wonderful. This is the first time that this movie shows its true brilliance, right? Because this, so far, good, bad movie, but I've seen it's like, this is the first time you realize that this is going to be the dumbest people ever trying to make a smart guy movie. And it begins with this chalkboard behind them. What might as well read two plus two equals question mark. <laughs> oh, I know. It's like, it's like a, a barely doable mind. <laughs> <laughs> right so here's what's happening this lab is owned by a guy named ahmed akbar and which is the, oh my god the lazy they were just like name muslim words uh muslim we'll start with a's ahmed akbar got it we looked up words related to muslim starting with a Done. They googled, they googled names of islam and we're like okay uh, this is the first one that comes up <laughs> so we learn that he's the owner of this lab. We're looking at a headline about them. That's how we learn this. And we also find out that he is apparently the world's number one ranked refugee, which is a rankings board that exists. <laughs> I did not know they were ranking him. Okay, let's just be clear. I don't know how Malala lost that spot, but this guy must have done something <laughs> really excellent. Right, right. I, I still have Duke in Kansas ahead of him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as far as my final four picks, but uh, he does have a shot. You got to pick some Cinderella's though. It's you know, yeah. you're not going to win a big pool otherwise. This the wild card ruined the whole bracket. It's fucking <laughs> <Right>. bullshit. <laughs> oh. So this is one of five labs we find out, and they're all competing to build the first matter transfer machine for the U.S. government. And Ram is the only person who got a perfect score on that. Genius test. That's what that was. That Kobayashi Maru test was like a physics genius test to see who would work at this lab. Ram's the only person who got a perfect score. Amy got a pretty good score. She's on the team. There's a couple other people, Felix and Simon, who are going to be on the team. But Ram, his IQ is technically infinity, and he's the smartest person <laughs> in the world. And they have this little fight there where they're like, come on, man, we want to break. And he's like, no, I have to run another algorithm. And they're like, not Fuck another algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> I want so badly to know what the people who made this movie think an algorithm is. Oh, they looked up math words starting with A and they were like, oh, cool. <laughs> Ahmed Akbar algorithm. We got it all perfect. We did it. Nailed it. Told you we wouldn't have to turn the page. Yeah. He solves a Rubik's Cube. Nope, still not quantum <laughs> teleportation. That's an algorithm thing. I don't know. I love that they went right from the test to like, okay, you guys, this is the biggest project of all time. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and uh, this is where Amy wants to say grace before they do each algorithm too. <laughs> it's amazing. We are going to eat these algorithms. <laughs> <laughs> She starts praying and Ram's like, hey, you know, praying doesn't work, right? And she's like, you want to put your penis in my vagina? And he's like, I'm sorry, science and prayer are equal. Yes, <laughs> correct. Oh, please, correct. God, let me fuck Amy. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where we meet Simon, the sassy black super genius scientist. <laughs> Dude, the best character in the whole flick in my opinion. He's he incredible. Absolutely he absolutely is. He spends this scene refusing to get out of the fly machine. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're about to test another algorithm, which means they're going to like run a, a teleportation program and zap a ball from one platform to another. But Simon like takes his chair and just sits down inside the platform and is like, you're not going to do it again. I'm going to sit right here. I don't care. I'm fine. Which in a normal like work environment, that would be kind of funny. But Ram gets irrationally upset. <laughs> I'm like, why are you so mad, dude? Like, oh, he's just having some fun. <laughs> this is also where we learn that if they succeed in matter teleportation, 
matter teleportation, they will receive a $2 million bonus. Tight. Which nice. seems super low for discovering sure, feels teleportation. Low for teleportation. I'd, I'd like to get paid a little bit more than that. Yeah. We also find out that they've, they've landed on lightning-based teleportation as, as the mm. best way to go. <laughs> so we see that happen once. It's the safest, to be fair. Yeah, right. No, it's it's like I mean, lightning is uh, it moves things, right? Lightning, it's fast. I don't know. It's bright. So <laughs> Simon finally gets up out of the chair, and they turn on the algorithm, and lightning zaps the chair, and the chair explodes. So it's not exactly working. <laughs> it's not safe. No, <laughs> I'm just glad Simon got up. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah he was great. I needed him throughout the movie. This movie would have been so boring. Yeah. <laughs> so then we move on to later that day, and they all find out that Ahmed Quran Muslim Akbar is coming <laughs> to check on their progress. Yeah. And they're worried he's going to be super mad that they didn't invent teleportation in three months. Yeah. This scene is, are w- 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 we in trouble? And I want them to be like, yeah, on second thought, we probably shouldn't have put the testing thing like, you know, right in the middle of our computer prank. (laughs) Right. Yeah, the scene scene right after it is just them being very stressed out that they're going to be jobless. (laughs) (laughs) Right. So Ahmed shows up, he walks in and he's all like happy and smiling. He's like, oh, (laughs) you guys blew up my lab with with lightning classic. It was lightning, right? And they're like, yeah, we, we tried to. Teleport with lightning. He's like, ah, that's cool. That's cool. Ram Goldstein. Wow. Number one ranked sciencer in the world. I'm the number one refugee. I don't know if you heard. That's so cool. We're both ranked number one at stuff. Look at us. (laughs) (laughs) But it turns out he's not mad because he shows them a video. And right before it explodes, the chair teleported. So now they're not in trouble. They're his first ranked science. Apparently he has a ranking system for his science teams and they've just been bumped up to first place because of the explosion. Also, what that means is their experiment was, all right, we're going to zap lightning and teleport this thing from this platform to this platform. And their method of figuring out if it worked was one of them was supposed to like look at the second platform and nobody (laughs) did this time. Right. They're like, that was the lightning was very distracting. (laughs) (laughs) The, the best part is they're, they're like, wow, us being dumb ended up making us even smarter. We are the <laughs> smartest people in the world. We even make, we make brilliant accidents. Right. Oh, yeah. Right? But the accident kind of worked. They realized they might have teleportation. So they seal up the teleportation room that they've created, whatever the fuck that means. And now they're, they're getting an even better lab. Ahmed upgraded them. Here's your new lab. Uh, it's much nicer. As you can see, it is very blue, very blue. Same right. sound stage, but uh, didn't take off the spike tape this time. So, Is there a graph paper area? There is a graph <laughs> paper area. Okay, we're going to be able to do a lot more here. He cool. also informs them, like he heard our earlier criticism, that if they invent teleportation again, they get a $10 million bonus for each of you. <laughs> Wanted so badly for one of them to raise their hands and be like, I'm so sorry. It seems to be a scaling system. At what point, like, what's the max out on this? Is there a sale? Is there a commission cap? I don't want to be a dick. If I invent teleportation, I'm going to teleport, like, all your money, like, hundreds of millions. (laughs) However much you have, I'm going to teleport it into my house. That's what's going to (laughs) happen. I also love the fact that Ram was never like, well, I've kind of been doing all the work. (laughs) Uh, I think my cut should be bigger. (laughs) (laughs) So... Now we we cut away from them and then we get a a reestablishing shot so that we know we're in the same building that we were in in the last scene. They'll do this again and again. This is the only place that we are other other than one other absurd location that we'll explain when we get there. The only place we ever are is this lab. But we're at this lab still and Brant who recently became an atheist to spite God, <laughs> that's what they think is happening with atheism. He's here to meet with Ahmed. Brant is head of security at this lab. That's what he was talking about before. Right. But Ahmed knows about the the dead family. So it's half my condolences and half. Now, if we could get you to watch this orientation video on sexual harassment. (laughs) I know. Also, like Brant's security business card literally looks like a 
Print Vista Bell Bondsman. <laughs> it just like says security. It looks like a stamp. I'm like, oh my God, dude. Come on. Right. So he's in the meeting with Ahmed. And Ahmed's like, yeah, really sorry about the whole uh, dead family thing. And Brand's like, it's cool. I'm an atheist now. No problems. You know, nothing matters. He also commiserates with Brandt about how they both have dead family members in, in a really weird way. The bonding scene. Yes, this is his origin story, which is that his parents were killed for being Christians. Right. Right. Wait, for being Christians? Is that what? Yes. <laughs> they were killed for being Christians. So we doodly do back to that. And we see like the slow motion murder of his parents. Again, here's the anti-Muslim bias jumping right out to the forefront. The bad guys who are all like white guys from New Jersey are like, glory to Allah, and then slit his parents' throats. Oh, yeah, and and the kid playing Ahmed's character couldn't look like he gave less of a fuck that his dad was <laughs> He's like, no, no, okay. <laughs> and then again... Because this movie is fucking perfect, his doodly do gets interrupted by Brant, who's like, uh, sorry, do you mind? I was kind of in the middle of my tragic narrative. And the guy's like, yeah, sorry about that. Was I doodly doing? Yeah, I, I apologize. I put doodly dude <laughs> right. Right, right in the middle of the uh, thing. <laughs> and then they awkwardly handshake hug to end the scene. Yeah, it was warm. <laughs> we're going in, we're doing hug, we're doing the double tap, single tap, okay. three. I'm going to start at seven. Seven taps? No, that's weird. Seven's weird. Okay. Shall we kiss? Let's pray first, though. <laughs> <laughs> so their meeting's over, and now we're back in the lab with Ram and Amy, and they're working on quantum teleportation, which is harder than I thought, according yes. to Ram. This is literally the first line of the scene is, this is a lot harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> How hard did best. you think quantum teleportation was? What? The best. The best. <laughs> But uh, Amy has an idea. She's like, I think I know the problem. I think I know the problem. And she stands <laughs> up and pulls her hair back. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? Is this porn? Yeah, all of my notes here are turn into porn. Turn into porn. It's going to turn and, into and it porn. Does. It does. Yeah. So she's going to relax him. They go over into the corner out of the way of the cameras in their room and start making out a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, and this making out is next level their brother and sister making out. <laughs> it, it's it is upsetting. the most awkward two people that look like they don't want to kiss. Yeah. It's not hot. They keep going yeah. same angle, like the two people trying to walk past each other on the sidewalk being like, ha, 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 ha. Uh, we keep bumping heads. This is not working. Yeah. Seriously, like Disney movie kissing. <laughs> right. But as they're making out, all of a sudden, Ram is like, did you hear that? I'm pretty sure I heard the sound of hacking. Yes. <laughs> because they're next, they're next to like a server cabinet and he can hear what hacking sounds like from yep. near it. This is next level. And so he patches into something with something with a computer. He computers the computer and he figures out that a guy named Rashad Amir. <laughs> God. The it. other two Muslim names yeah. they knew. Right. Rashad Amir, uh, presumably the world's number one ranked terrorist, I, I have to imagine. He is somehow hacked into the communications of this lab. Ram gets a, a video feed that's coming in somehow, and he sees Rashad on, like, Skype. And Rashad Amir is on Skype with Ahmed, who we find out right here is also a bad guy. Ahmed is working with Rashad Amir to invent teleportation to use for terrorism. For terrorism! Yeah. He's oh inventing a teleportation machine so he can put, like, bombs into places. <laughs> right. I love that LeBram's reaction is like, oh, man, that shady boss guy? He's hella shady. <laughs> yeah. I did not see that coming. <laughs> yeah, big, big plot twist. And <laughs> this, this is one of my favorite parts of the movie. We learn that Ahmed, yeah, he should have been completely anti- Islamic extremist because his parents literally got killed by a group like that. But he has the most aggressive, the world's number one ranked case of <laughs> Stockholm syndrome ever. So yes. he's also a terrorist. And we will never discuss that ever again. That will be their one explanation for why he is a bad guy because their movie Nonsense. makes no sense. And then he's just going to be a straight villain for the rest of the movie. 
Stockholm Syndrome. Yep. All right, now we're back with the rest of the team, and they're trying to figure out the Python code for quantum teleportation on their computers. <laughs> but again, they're doing it wrong on purpose. Ram and Amy are doing it wrong on purpose because now they know it's going to be used to, like, teleport a fucking anarchist's cartoon bomb into Alex Jones's <laughs> compound. <laughs> right. I love, like, the underlying stress of, like, dude, we got to do this in a day. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get this shit done today. He said by oh. the end of Thursday. And <laughs> the plan that Ram lands on here is absurd. He's like, guys, we have to, it's got to be done by Thursday. I feel like we're making this harder than it has to be. What if we just make a simple time machine and that's basically also already a teleportation machine, right? That's both right. at that point. <laughs> right. It does It does both things. <laughs> oh. And then he realizes he's had an epiphany. He's figured something out. He figured out that like, all right, I know how I'm going to do the time travel, which will then do the, the teleportation also. And he's like, everybody leave. Everybody get out. I'm not going to masturbate in the past or the future. That's not why. Just everybody leave. <laughs> <laughs> so again... Here's the science that this movie gives us, and it's so fucking good. The problem with his teleportation machine is that he's been trying to send the same object to the same time. But you can send an object to a different time. Yeah, that seems <laughs> way easier. <laughs> right. And he decides like, oh, let me just measure the amount of seconds it takes to get the ball from this platform to this platform. That's about, I'm going to say 1.4 seconds as I moved it with my hand <laughs> just now. I'll just type in 1.4 seconds into the time travel box of my program here. <laughs> bling, 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 and it works. Look, I did time travel. Great. It does time uh, travel. Let me type it into my Commodore 64. <laughs> <laughs> See if I can make the master of moving shit for terrorists. <laughs> I'm going to be well, so yeah. good at pitfall. <laughs> yeah. Because he realizes that the terrorists are going to use this. He literally tries to shove the proof of his time travel into his mouth. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, he he tests his new theory on a little ball, and the ball doesn't exact Some amount of the ball transports, but also I think a little, like, rubber eraser appears on the platform, too, and he just, like, no grabs idea. it slowly and eats it. It didn't make any sense <laughs> to me. What happened here? I have no idea. He just shoved it in his <laughs> mouth. Nobody knows why he, he shoved that. it in his mouth. I wanted so badly for terrorist guy to kick down the door and be like, come on now, drop it. Drop it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to make a sweeping motion behind his teeth. <laughs> but as he does this, we see like evil Muslim security guys on security cameras watching him do this and being like, did you see that? Was that an eraser? I'm pretty sure he just invented time travel, right? Because that's a time travel thing. <laughs> yep. So, so they run in with guns to stop him from secretly inventing time travel without telling them how it works, I guess. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I can't. Th that, that's the only way I can explain what's happening here. Yeah, the security footage of, of just a, an eraser appearing there, and they immediately connect that with like, this guy's figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> yep. He's figured it all out. Yeah. <laughs> so Ram has to go to Ahmed's office now to explain why he would have an eraser, one of the telltale signs of time travel. And, and Ahmed's like, explain the eraser. And he's like, no, no, it's not that it's not uh, time travel. If you think about it, that eraser from the future was already there. Right. <laughs> just think about it. Stupid. And I love how he's he's like, he's telling the guy, he's like, you can't travel through time. And he's like, really? Because we could like go back and kill Hitler. To which Ram responds, yeah, but then you might make super Hitler. Yeah, yeah. He right. actually, Ram, in a bold move, argues against killing Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I did not see that one coming. Hey, man, are you the protagonist? What did you just say? Okay. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, it's weird. He's like, but I really want to go back and bang Marty McFly's mom. <laughs> <laughs> Would have been a really odd twist to the movie. Yeah. He, he does say like, hey, man, he, we're going to fuck up the space-time continuum. And <laughs> I wanted him to be like, yeah, have you have you not? Like, well, you'll end up making out with your mom or something. That happens. Like, right, watch right, a movie, right. man. Save Obviously. the clock tower. Save the clock tower. <laughs> <laughs> but then the bad guy in the movie is like, no. Allah obviously wants me to kill Hitler. 
So that was a weird flip flop when the movie got super confused with itself. Well, right. it, what's amazing is, again, keep in mind, this is a religious movie made by religious people because Grant then responds, why did Allah let Hitler rise to power if he wants you to kill him with time travel? And he's like, fuck you, that's our <laughs> argument. I mean, I, we'll torture the secrets of time travel out of you. <laughs> <laughs> and then they taser Ram and throw him in a jail cell. Right, but not before he corrects their kegging technique. Yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> he literally stops them and he's like, hey, uh, just so you know, like you're gagging me wrong. You're going to want to put something in my mouth. That's kind of the whole point of a gag. <laughs> and the guards are like, thanks. Thank you for your gagging feedback. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> All right. Well, now that Ram explained how to properly gag someone, he is gagged now, which is a great time to take a break. And then we'll be back with a very coherent narrative about time travel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we will. Can't wait. Take him away, men. We have ways of making him talk. Right away, sir. Uh, seriously? Uh, seriously what? Uh, your gag is just a piece of cloth. Um, yeah. Well, that's not really a gag, is it? It's like a mouth cover. Right. Also, my hands are tied in the front, so like I'm gonna take this off when you guys leave. So, huh. right. So right. So we so we tie you behind your back. Honestly, tying isn't ideal. There's just like a lot of wiggle room when you try and tie a person. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. To no, themselves. these are good notes. Ah. Uh, what if we tie him to a chair? We'll tie him that way. Better. Yes. And then gag you. After yeah. That. Okay. All right. Now, now I'm being held hostage. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now call me a little pig. For the what? For the for the kidnapping? Mm, yeah, it's important. Do it. Uh, okay, you're you're a little pig. Mm, yeah, I am. Oh, dude. What? You have a boner. What? No, no I okay. I that is a fear boner because you guys are scaring me so much as Gross. a hostage. Not, not better that way. Homophobe. Homophobe. Okay. No, you're, you're wrecking this. Uh, yeah, I, I don't even want to tie him anymore. Let's just not. Uh, come on, guys. Guys, I'm going to escape. Guys, don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Heath, is Johnny here yet? Uh, no. Why? I want to give him these. You, you want to give him a handful of loose pills? Mm -hmm. I, I don't think he's going to want those. Aw, oh, come on, Heath. I got everything in here. I got I got uppers, I got downers, even some hair loss meds the vet gave me. The vet gave them to you? Yes. Yes, he did. Eli, why don't you just go to forhims.com? What's forhims.com? They're a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. <laughs> okay. Pills from a website, Heath. Pee on the other one. The, uh, that's not the expression. And forhims connects you to real doctors online. Okay, the doctors are real, but what about the pills? Prescription solutions backed by science. So like, if we wouldn't get in trouble, we could say a popular brand name of hair loss medication, and then people listening to this would be like, oh, you can get that online now? That's, that's cool. Exactly, yes, you could do that. Nice, how do I sign up? Right now, our listeners can get started with their first month free. Just go to forhimscom slash gam. That's forhimscom slash gam. Prescription requires an online consultation with a physician who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. Offer valid only if prescribed. Three-month minimum subscription. Additional restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Remember, that's forhimscom slash gam. All right. Sorry, Johnny. No handful of pills for you. Well, I mean, y you could still offer them. Right? Yeah. Green M&Ms. But pills. Exactly. Yeah. And we're back. When we left off, they threw Ram in a jail cell <laughs> that they have at their science lab. Obviously. <laughs> now we're back in the computer room with the evil scientists trying to figure out Ram's time travel Python code. But he encrypted it, and then he deleted it, and then he <laughs> shredded it. He did all of those things. Feels like deleting would have been fine by itself. But he shredded a hard drive, I guess, in a shredder. Can never be too safe. <laughs> Evil scientist extra might as well say he hit okay after he said empty trash. There's nothing we can do. 
<laughs> right. So now Ahmed needs to have a meeting with Brant about time travel security for his facility. He's got to get Brant on board with all this. Now that they have time travel, it's even more important. And he goes, literally, he walks up to him and he's like, Brent, I must speak to you about something. And I wrote as a joke in my notes, hey, this guy made time travel. We need you to torture it out of him. But that is <laughs> not just what's going to happen. It's what Brand suggests. He's like, so this guy made, he's like, you want me to torture it out of him? And he's like, wow, all right, here you go. Yeah, I have a certain specific set of skills. I'm a, <laughs> I'm an atheist. I don't know if I told you. I have no absolute morality. <laughs> uh, I will torture. I know. He, he literally looks at him like, I'll get him to talk. I'm an atheist now. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So that's their plan. They're going to torture it out of him. And then we see Ahmed telling the rest of Ram's team, hey, uh, great job. You guys invented time travel, or at least Ram did. Um, also, you're kidnapped from now on, if that's okay. You will get paid <laughs> your bonus, but you are kidnapped. So that's that's Good news, happening. bad news. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I know. That guy's character. Oh, my God. <laughs> but these scientists are like, oh, well, I mean, good news, good news. We kind of like it here. It's, it's nice. You have nice rooms. <laughs> Right. They didn't seem too stressed. <laughs> so from there, we cut over to Brant torturing Ram for the time travel secrets. Yeah. And he's just punching him in the face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ahmed walks in and, and Brant's like, uh, I got this. I know he hasn't said anything yet, but if I punch him like five or six more times, I think he's going to break and tell us time travel. <laughs> we'll, we'll be all set. Yeah. So he's punching him. He's like, I don't know what's wrong. I'm an atheist. <laughs> <laughs> but Ahmed has a plan of his own. He's like, don't worry, uh, I'm going to murder his parents. So he has to use time travel to save him. He'll, he'll tell us that that's what we'll, we'll definitely figure it out. Yeah. At one point, Ram even says, give me more time. And I'm like, to use the time machine? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe I can use the time machine, go back, give myself an extra hour. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> But this is where Brandt draws the line. He's cool with torture, but not parental threatening. <laughs> and he expresses this concern. And Ahmed's like, Brandt, sidebar, please. Can I have a sidebar? Literally. Can I, talk to can you I speak here? with you in the hall for a whisper fight? <laughs> You're embarrassing me in front of Ram, who were trying to torture the secrets to time travel. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Clauber said you shouldn't interrupt me when you have guests over. <laughs> I'm using my eye messages. Uh, you need I feel statements that, yes, remember he said that. He said that. That's important. But his actual defense is, look, we're not really going to kill his parents. It's a it's a prank. It's a jape, a hullabaloo. Come on. <laughs> You've never is, pretended to kill someone's parents. Come on. on. This is just, that's, this is how business negotiation works. I slide his dead parents across the table and then he does time <laughs> travel. Everybody knows that. Art of the deal. It should be noted in this particular scene, Ahmed's character is wearing this ridiculous dark green, like shimmery, uh, <laughs> shimmery tie shirt combo. Ridiculous. With, like a blazer on. I mean, he, lo he literally looks like the concierge at a Holiday Inn. <laughs> <laughs> so like, you cannot take this dude seriously in that, in that get up. No. Right. So they're out in the hall. They have their little whisper fight. And then they walk back into the room with Ram. And Ahmed's like, all right, as you can see in my dedicated viewing room through the glass there that I use for murder negotiations, my henchmen are going to kill your parents. I'm going to kill them in seven seconds. And this is what I was talking about, the best words. <laughs> and everybody's like, what? Just do five or ten, man. It's a five or ten situation. You're being weird. Kills the dad in seven seconds, then kills the mother in 13 seconds. <laughs> then he goes to 13. <laughs> you oh might think God. you would get double the time to think about your mother's death, but no, almost double It's not double. Oh, okay, almost. <laughs> All right. All right. So now we watch Brant thinking about this ethical dilemma of parent murder and time travel. He's walked down some other hallway and he's just sitting on a bench being mopey. <laughs> he has this great line where he goes, I'm not the bad guy here. And I just wrote in my notes, Really? How's that? Yeah, How's you're, that? You're kind of one of them. You're, you're just you're doing your job. You're just doing your job. That's an excuse for everybody ever in all of history. It's fine. And then he gets angry at God as an atheist again. Yeah, weird, weird flex. <laughs> <laughs> 
And then we go back to Ahmed and he's decided he's going to ramp it up. Now that he's killed the parents, he's, he's got to somehow <laughs> do something bigger because he doesn't have the time travel secrets yet. So he, he's grabbed Amy now, which is Ram's girlfriend, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's going to give him five seconds this time. And I kid you not, he says, I'll give you five seconds this time. And Ram's like, I don't know if I can do it. And he goes, three, two. <laughs> <laughs> when you said you could do it, that counted as two seconds. <laughs> All right. I'm going to count up the Fibonacci sequence to 13. One, one, two, three. <laughs> But finally, you know, apparently he really didn't care for his parents because he agrees to do it. He's just going to need three days to figure it out. Yeah, he's like, three days. Jesus came back in three days, so this should be hella easier. Than <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now it's three days later. It's we, three days later right away. It's right oh. away three days later. That's the fucking dumb. They wrote that into the script, and then they were like, oh, fuck, we have... Literally nothing happens between that scene and that. Yeah, like, Just say him, yes. What do we have them do? I want to know. I can't wait for the sequel where, the, where they explain what happened for those three days. <laughs> <laughs> where they were just like time travel, Python, time travel, uh, for yeah, loop. Please, man, I can't believe. For loop of time. It's like I got a really yeah. big three days ahead of me. <laughs> right. So it's now immediately three days later. We're reestablished in the same building in case anybody was terrified where we might have gone. We haven't gone anywhere. We're, we're in the same building. And we're going to see if Ram figured out time travel for people, not just objects. Right. No beta testing on this. Right. And Ahmed just instructs a random henchman it's to hilarious. get onto the time pad. He's all, you are disposable. Get in there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> also, he calls it a time pad and like for a technology you're inventing right away, it's super quick to just be calling stuff the time pad. Yeah, I know. I feel like that's presumptuous, but that's what they've called it. Like getting the TARDIS. Yeah. <laughs> and we also learn here that you can't time travel unless you wear Ram's special Apple watch that he invented. Yeah. You'll you'll explode otherwise or something like that. Yeah. yeah I spend the movie calling it the time Fitbit. That's what I did too. Yeah. Same thing. I was like, oh, it's, oh, it's this time travel Fitbit again. Yeah. It actually does keep track of your vitals. They say that. So it's very yeah. silly. Yes. It's a, it's a temporal Fitbit. With all this time travel, I'm not getting my steps in at all. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so they give the time Fitbit to one of the henchmen and they're like, get in the lightning -y area. And he's like, he's like, fine, fine. But he does it kind of hesitantly. He goes, yes. <laughs> he, like slowly reaches his hand and arm in to the area. And I was like, that's uh, that's not a good idea. That's just going to send your arm through time yeah. by itself. I, I, I wrote in my notes, I definitely wouldn't ease my way into the time machine, right. dude. Right. This is an all or nothing kind of thing. <laughs> I wanted his arm to go into the future and just start like punching people five seconds before they see it. It's <laughs> just an arm <laughs> going around the room. No, nothing fun like that happens. But it sort of works. The, the henchman gets at least transported from one pad to the other. And now he's a henchman in the past, in the present. I don't know. Thus begins a ridiculous, I have no idea what's happening for the rest of the movie time travel scenario. Yeah. Thus begins this movie's attempt to take off its shoes to count to 20. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> We're going to do a count to 22. <laughs> but this is where he announced his plan that he is going to go back in time and kill Jesus Christ. <laughs> Boom. And he's going to get Brant and a team of his soldiers to do it for him. Ahmed's going to stay in the lab and he's going to send his team to do it. And he's like, hey, Brant, you're, you're still kind of salty about God killing your family, right? So let's have you go back and murder Jesus. That'll fix it. How'd you like to kill his kid? I love the pitch too, where he's like, you want to make sure Jesus is legit, right? I got your <laughs> thing. Uh, <laughs> they use that exact phrasing multiple times in the movie. Like, you think Jesus is legit? <laughs> yeah. The only time, the only time I've ever said, "Is this thing legit?" is about something I knew for sure wasn't legit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
It's a webcam you bought in a public park somewhere in 2019. Right. You think this timeshare in Costa Rica is legit? <laughs> right. <laughs> generally not good. It shows the underlying lack of faith of the of the writers and directors of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that's where they've landed, though. Ahmed has decided we're canceling Christianity. And I was like, okay, I mean, that's not the worst thing you could do with a time machine. Yeah, <laughs> I wrote honest. the same thing I wrote. Not going to lie, I'm kind of on board. Right. <laughs> right. I was, I was like, actually, I might have gone. <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't want to be like the trigger man or anything, but I would yeah. definitely watch it unfold. Yeah. Nobody killed my family because of religion, but still, like, they, a lot of families got killed because of religion, just constantly. Bible-themed Westworld, exactly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so now we cut back to the kidnapped science team, and they're being held, for some reason, not in the jail cell area. They're being held inside their lab with access to all their computers and all, all the cameras and everything. Yeah, yeah weird lockup. <laughs> right. Uh, and this is where we introduce, like, foreigner character who can hackity hack the cameras like he's been in the movie up until this point but this is where he will basically be fit into the holes of the computer like a sprocket <laughs> yeah. yeah that is felix i believe felix he's one of the other nerds on the team and he's got the, the cameras up and he sees ahmed teleporting brant and his team of soldiers using the time platform he sees him disappear and he's like why would they Send a team of soldiers through time. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, he's bad guy. Right. Okay. Got it. They're like, I wonder where I wonder where they're going. Oh, you'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> you'll find out soon but yeah, they they hackity hack their way through the computers and they find past brands. So this is where the movie gets confusing. Don't worry. We're going to lead you through it by the hand. So this scene takes place before the last scene. And they're going to go <laughs> hack their way through the building the and find... The script is time traveling now, too. That is yeah, very exactly. And they find Ram in the past. Now, when you watch the whole movie, that will make sense because this team will later go back to before he finished the time travel and sent them back in time. However, the movie got what? confused by itself. So they are going further back in time, even though they watch the future on the television monitor Buckle in. This is a time travel movie made by stupid people. I have no oh. idea what Eli just said, but the movie continues nonetheless. <laughs> yeah, it keeps going. And we get right now the greatest cut in movie history. And Absolutely no doubt. We are yep. now in 33 AD watching Jesus Christ, the son of God, praying in the woods somewhere in ancient Israel. <laughs> Oh, and boy, do they get right to it. They do. <laughs> yep. It's like, plow. And killing Jesus seems like it should have been harder. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is where I got confused because like, this is definitely a Christian movie, but they they don't make Jesus put up much of a fight, really. No. no Jesus didn't even deke away from it. He was just <laughs> like, all right, I'm just going to take this one like a champ. Yeah. He did seem to know what was about to happen, though. So Brant and the soldiers appear in 33 AD, like uh, 30 feet away from Jesus somehow. Right. And Jesus hears the magical noise of that happening. And he's like, fuck, time traveling terrorists are going to kill me, aren't they? Uh, Classic. This is going to be a whole thing. I'm, I don't know. Which means in this timeline, God, in his moment of the take this cup from me in the garden, God was like, huh. Okay, you thought that cup was weird. Let me hit you with this news. So you're about to die, right? Time-traveling atheists from the future are going to come back and shoot you in the face. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, God did not run that by me. <laughs> <laughs> so when they first arrived, by the way, I wanted these soldiers to be like, ah, oh, fuck. Okay, we have to walk to Nazareth now? I don't know. It's what? Wait, hold on. Did... It's Galilee? Is that different? That's in Nazareth or Nazareth is in Galilee? What? Ugh. And then we just watch them walk, walk through ancient Israel for a while. That's the rest of the movie. <laughs> the rest of the movie is them walking to Nazareth. <laughs> right. But he's right there. They see Jesus and they're like, pretty sure that's our guy. Takes out a Renaissance painting. Yep. That's Jesus Christ. That's definitely him. Let's go kill him. And boy, they kill him so fast. They do. There's no suspense to the killing of Jesus. <laughs> no. 
Look, <laughs> Christian movie or no, I did not expect this movie to show someone shooting Jesus in the face. Oh, it's no. brutal. <laughs> I do love the argument that they have here. The, yes. the argument between Jesus and Brant. Brant goes up to Jesus. He's got him on the ground now and they've killed a bunch of the disciples and they see the Roman guards are about to show up and take him to the crucifixion. So they need to get this done in time. So Brant's standing over Jesus and he's like, hey man, if you're really the son of God, you'll stop these bullets, won't you? And Jesus is like, well, you know what? I might just allow the bullets. Have you heard of a crucifixion? It's kind of a, <laughs> I'm gonna, you know what? I'm going with the bullets. <laughs> it's like old it's like old timey bullets. First off, imagine actually getting to be so mad at God and then getting to kill him with your own hands. That's so tight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My true. character is like, man, this is the ultimate revenge story. I was mad at God and then I got to kill him in the flesh. Yeah. Wow. This is, <laughs> this is this is what the people who made this movie think is like the perfect atheist revenge plot. Like, we'd all love this. And yeah, honestly, this part, maybe. I don't know. If God killed yeah. my family, if I was convinced of that. <laughs> I don't know that I would care that much. I was just be like, no, I'm just going to keep moving on with my life. Right. I also wouldn't be an atheist at that point. They don't seem aware of that whole thing. <laughs> yeah, right, I know. They're like, you have to, If you can't kill God without believing in him. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Back to the script. <laughs> yeah. Right. So he's like, this is for killing my family, motherfucker. And he's about to shoot him. And one more time, God argues back or Jesus argues back. And he's like, nope, this is me. I'm killing me. This doesn't count. You didn't do it. I did it. <laughs> right, right, right. Sorry. This is suicide by you. Oh, my God. I wanted them to be, I wanted Jesus to like run over to a tree and put his hands on it. I'm safe. I'm safe. You can't kill me. No, because I got your jacket. You didn't get it. You didn't. <laughs> At any point, do you think Jesus was like, damn, Judas isn't that bad? <laughs> And by the way, this is the moment where they first notice, hey, hold on. Was that guy speaking fucking English to us? I'm pretty sure <laughs> right. I heard Jesus Christ speaking English. And that comes up. Yeah, it, that comes back a bunch. I wanted them to realize like, oh man, there must be like time travel going on. Some, and they turn around and like a Mossad team is just laughing at him like, yeah, <laughs> we already did this, idiots. <laughs> You're so far behind. <laughs> right, right. Yep, but Christianity is now canceled, according to their mm -hmm. plan, and it's time to go back to the present. With Jesus's body, by the way. Well, yeah, right. They're going to take the corpse. I didn't understand that part, but we cut back to Ram and the team watching on the, the video cameras the soldiers and the corpse of Jesus being <laughs> transported body. back to the present. <laughs> the body bag. I'm just like, this seems unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> really wanted him to leave the body bag of Turin behind. <laughs> 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 and at this point, I'm thinking to myself, why would they bring the body back? That's really weird. And then I thought, okay, if Ram Goldstein the Jewish scientist has to crucify Jesus Christ to fix Christianity in the present. This is the best movie ever. They, right. they don't get there. Spoiler alert. This is so close to the best movie ever. It, it really is though. <laughs> <laughs> we also learned some science here. I guess this is important. Ram explains that the time dimension, when this happens, when you travel in time, the time dimension then has to perform like, like a long Windows update on <laughs> yeah, itself and, and rewrite itself. Uh -huh. So they have like five minutes before their present, now future selves, now present selves. I don't know. them. Whatever. Themselves in this scene would get overwritten into a new timeline. But they've got a little bit of time because of the buffering. I really want it to work like a VHS. Like there's, you know, there's that little gap where you see a bit of the old timeline on there because you didn't record the same commercial <laughs> right. breaks as the old one. <laughs> one other note on this scene, when he realizes that he's gone back in time to kill Jesus, he says, I get it. It's the ultimate jihad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Made it sound like a Nintendo 64 game. <laughs> <laughs> right, but Amy also went back in time with Ram here. And she starts arguing with him about theology. She's like, hold on, but Jesus is God. He wouldn't let this happen. He wouldn't let the ultimate jihad happen, right? <laughs> and Ram's like, eh, you're stupid. But okay, no, <laughs> let, let's assume you're not stupid. 
Jesus obviously has a plan, and that plan involves us winning a time machine fight. That's clearly part of the plan now. We are doing this. It's now prophecy. Yeah. (laughs) It should be noted that the science conversation that just precedes the theological conversation, the dialogue is complete and utter trash. (laughs) Nonsense. (laughs) It's, It's confusing. Every like the actors and actresses have no idea what they're talking about. It confused me. It confused. <laughs> I imagine every single person that ever watched this movie was just like, I have no fucking idea what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and then as the scene wraps up to make it even more confusing, he says, I programmed a MacGuffin fix into the movie code <laughs> of your time travel Fitbit. Right. Just say Einstein save parents. And it'll send you back to before my parents are killed. I programmed it, quote, while pretending to be asleep. (laughs) And I just really want to see that scene. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's that's in the that's in the director's cut. (laughs) Hey, Steve. Yeah, Rick, what's up? What's the uh, science guy doing? Oh, nothing. Uh, Looks like he's taking a nap. I think he's taking a nap. Why? Is he typing? Oh, yeah. Uh, kind of looks like he's typing. Yeah. Do people sleep type? I I guess so. Because that guy's definitely asleep and typing. Yeah, I guess so. It's weird. Yeah. We're guards. We're guards. Yeah, we are. Yep. Yeah, that made absolutely no sense. I don't know what <laughs> sleep type programming would be. Okay, so I I just want to review. Tell me if I have this correct. The plan now that we are to believe is the plan of Jesus Christ was to get crucified, resurrect, start Christianity, have that go for like 1,900 years, including having the Holocaust, blow right past that, definitely have that. Then, like 100 years after that, have a guy invent a time machine, have it get stolen by jihadists, but then have the jihadists lose a time machine fight to some nerds. That's, yes. That's the plan of God. So it is yeah. written. Mysterious ways. Okay. Right. So they decide, all right, we're going to go back to the present and we're going to figure this out. So then we watch Amy and Ram appear in the present together. The other two guys stayed in the past for a little bit just in case Amy and Ram get like shot by security as soon as they pop back into the lab. So they have like two shots at it. So Felix and Simon are still in the past. Amy and Ram appear in the present. But they appear too early because the time machine isn't set up for daylight savings time. (laughs) This is the greatest detail. (laughs) (laughs) It's so stupid. I said out loud to myself, (laughs) I was like, who the fuck is writing this shit? (laughs) (laughs) Like, what does this even mean, though? That means they programmed the clock of their time machine to account for daylight savings time, but wrong? Mm-hmm. Like, they sprung back and fell ahead? Or like, wh- what? <laughs> like, daylight savings time isn't a wrinkle in the time dimension. It's just how we do our clocks. Right. It is if you're an incredibly stupid person. Amazing. Yeah. But that means, think about the the real implications that inside the heads of the people who wrote this movie... Daylight savings time takes place in the physical manifestation of the concept of right. time. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. I wanted them to be like, all right, so they fuck. Okay, here's what we do. New plan. We go back and murder the guy who invented daylight savings, and then we come back to here, and then we start <laughs> over. Right. right. Which, again, I might be on board for. I, 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 I don't like that system. The best part is how Amy delivers that line, the daylight savings time line, where she's like, it's tonight. I'm like, fucking of course it is. <laughs> two out of 365 chance that they would uh, be time traveling on the day it ends up being, hey, we got to fall back. Yeah. <laughs> so here's her plan. And this is so fucking amazing. She sign languages to herself. By the way, this actress runs out of sign language like three letters in. It's fantastic. <laughs> She's sign languaging to herself watching on the cameras, which they did earlier, to go back 
even further and save Ram. But again, because this movie was cut together by the monkey that Ronald Reagan put to bed in bedtime for Bobo, <laughs> we cut to them saving Ram earlier in the movie from the same scene that they did, which would be like, and here's the <sighs> metaphor I thought of, imagine if Marty's letter to Doc in Back to the Future had been, Doc, it's going to storm tonight. When I'm up on the clock tower, never mind, it works out fine. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's going to be cool. They're so confused. So am I, though. So, again, correct me if I'm wrong. Just throughout, correct me if I'm wrong. Amy 2 or 3, whatever, Amy is doing the signing here to herself, to her number 2 self. Amy 3 is signing to Amy 2. And then security guards bust into that room with Amy 3 and shoot her. Yes. But Amy 2 had just gotten just enough sign language to realize what she has to do to save the whole thing. Correct. Okay. So she has to go get Ram 1, who is in lockup. So Amy 2, Simon 2, and Felix 2 go get Ram 1. And their, their new plan is to go back 10 minutes before the other time in 33 AD, go 10 minutes before the soldiers who killed Jesus and fix that. That's the new plan? Correct. Yes. Wow, I think I, I think might have so. understood that. Look at yeah. you. I'm glad you did because I had no fucking idea. Finnegan's Wake's got nothing on you, Heath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where's that skeleton key? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we're back with, again, do I have this right? Simon 3... And Felix three or two? No, Simon one and Felix one. Oh, okay, right. Simon one and Felix one. Well, two. In, in my head, it's two because they've done one time jump. So Simon one was before they ever did time travel. Oh, okay. So yeah, Simon two and Felix two then, yeah. Simon two and Felix two who are on this new timeline that includes time travel. Yes. They're still back in 33 AD. But yes, in some sense, Simon one and Felix one, yeah. Mm-hmm. And they realize they both have to somehow get back to the present, but <laughs> they try to do it and only Felix gets transported because Simon's Apple watch broke. Yep, somehow. his time Fitbit broke. <laughs> of course he has the faulty Fitbit. <laughs> and by the way, just want to throw that out there. If there's anyone who it's going to suck to be stuck in the past for, it's the one black actor in this right. film. So now we're back with Ram 1, Amy 2, yes. Simon 2, and Felix 2. Yes. They're in 33 AD. Mm -hmm. They've made it back using the time machine again. They're 10 minutes before the soldiers show up. Heath, you simple, simple whore. It is Ram <laughs> 1, Amy 3, Simon 3, Felix 3. What are you talking about? No, it's not. Felix 2 is... In the future, which just got overwritten and turned into a crazy forest full of ashes, and Simon 2 is stuck in the past. Oh, is this three now? They're fucking Yes. Fuck. Okay. So, ah, God damn Johnny, it. Johnny, back me up here. Back I, me up. I will need two hours to rewrite my notes and my numbering <laughs> system, and we'll be right back. No. <laughs> um, ultimately, it's not going to matter. <laughs> it will not matter. Very good point. I could have lettered them. I could have put Greek letters. It really doesn't fucking matter. Some other versions are in the past and they're 10 minutes ahead of the soldiers and they're going to try to stop the murder of Jesus to, to allow a different horrible murder of Jesus on a cross. That's yeah, the plan. And let's be clear how they do it. They're going to stick sticks into where they materialize <laughs> so that the bad guys materialize with sticks inside of them. I thought that was fucking genius. <laughs> that, is, that was excellent. I didn't even get that. I thought they were just like, all right, I feel like in about 10 minutes, we should be standing right next to the magical area and we'll just hit them with sticks the moment they show up. <laughs> but it's so much better. Oh, no way. That's pretty it's good. Incredible. That is what they did. You're right. But sadly, Amy 3 is shot here. She is shot, giving us one of the best moments in the movie where Ram takes off all of his clothes to make yeah. a tourniquet for her. And he's ripped, too. He, he is kind of ripped. Ram is, like, unexpectedly fit. Yeah. Okay, question on tourniquets. Pants um, tourniquet? Yeah, so he's making a tourniquet <laughs> to prevent her 
leg heart from pumping blood into her stomach area where she was shot. Is that what's yep. happening here? Mm -hmm. Yep. Pants tourniquet. Pants tourniquet to prevent yes. the leg heart pumping. Yeah. I was so excited for him to turn his underwear into a bandage and for him to do the rest of this movie with his <laughs> cock hanging out. But no, we don't get it. By the way, this is where she delivers probably one of my favorite lines in the movie where she says, Ram, you've got to save Jesus. <laughs> the best part, too, is Ram saying, I can't leave you. You're way hotter than Jesus. <laughs> right. Then he says, Jesus could just take care of himself. Yes. Best line ever. Oh, I best love movie. that. Oh, my God. It's such a great argument. He's like, OK, but Jesus is God. He could probably. And she's like, no. He's a poondoggle. He needs you to time travel, fight people by sticking sticks into where they're going to be. And Ram's just like, all right, just, okay, you're, you're going to die in a second. That's fine. I'm not doing your thing, but I'll pretend for a second that I am. I'll walk away. Look at me. I'm going to go save Jesus. Okay, you're stuck. But then he does kind of take an attempt at that. He walks away to try to interfere with the Roman guards or no, to interfere with What's happening here? What does he do? I'm glad you asked, Heath Enright. So as you notice, during the stick murdering, two of the soldiers, Brent, the guy who's mad at God, and Samir, the other Muslim guy who earlier in the movie asked if it was okay to kill Jesus since he was a prophet, they escaped because they fell off a cliff together. Oh, right. So okay. Ram 1 is now going off to kill them. This is Ram 2. This is Ram 2. No, this is Ram 1. Ram 1 came back in time. But now he's in time. Okay. Go, you fine. can't Go ahead. upgrade. Go ahead. He's Ram 1. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So he's going after Sabir and Brant because they didn't get killed by the sticks. They, like, jumped off a cliff just in time to not get killed by sticks, right? Correct. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm following. Yes. Thank you, this, Johnny, this for doing this. This was the multiple copies of the humans did get fairly confusing. <laughs> To at which one point I just stopped trying to number them. Yeah, was just for like, sure. I bet only one of these survive. Okay, but Johnny, in your professional time traveling opinion, when Ram 1 goes into the time machine and starts a new branch of his time tree, is he not Ram 2 at that point? I think he's Ram 2. Thank you. Oh, well, now you've fucked up the system entirely. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that there's no way of being sure. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you made the point earlier, it does not fucking matter. It, it sure won't. doesn't. It sure <laughs> doesn't. The We're putting so care. much more thought into this movie than this movie is. It's insane. <laughs> if they would have been smart, they would have done little trips to create multiple, multiple, multiple copies so they would have had a, an army of people. Ooh. Yes! That would have been the smartest thing to do. Yep. yep. Absolutely. So now we cut back over to Simon and Simon is going to fix his time travel Fitbit, which we'll remember is broken with a stick. Yeah. <laughs> Dude's innovative. <laughs> he, he pokes his time Fitbit with a stick and instead of it sending him back to the future, it sends him back further in time, but directly next to Jesus. <laughs> yeah. What are the odds of that? <laughs> he just pops up. And Jesus is like hanging out literally five feet from him. He's breaking social distancing rules. <laughs> oh, and this is where we get the Simon and Jesus scene, which is probably one of my favorite Mwah. scenes from the movie. This was beautiful. I made a note. This is by far the most earnest scene in the entire movie. <laughs> <laughs> they try to play this so straight that it makes almost no sense contextually in the rest of the film. Oh. None. But they're None. so excited for this to be kind of Bible-y. Yep. He's like Simon talking to Jesus. It's supposed to be a big deal. Yes. Yep. So Simon appears next to Jesus and he's like, are you Jesus Christ? And Jesus in English says, did my dad send you? <laughs> I know. Did my dad create a fucking time machine? I told him that was a stupid plan. We should have just gone straight with normal time. Whatever. Hello. Yes, I am, I am Jesus. Also, there's a moment where Jesus like closes, like he starts speaking in like Arabic. And then he takes this moment where he like thinks and like does, does Duolingo 
<laughs> in his head and then just speaks perfect english he like they show him processing and like oh i gotta go into english mode give me a sec oh, and you know there's an edited version of this script where all of a sudden he comes back and he talks in ebonics and he's like oh too far too far sorry, <laughs> yeah, sorry. my duolingo thing sorry. it's weird uh, simon <laughs> right oh, <laughs> so simon's job here is basically just to, to explain that hey man terrorists are going to shoot you in like 10 minutes, but we really need you to get crucified <laughs> instead. I know. Oh, wow. Okay. So let me explain. Uh, I saw a movie with Mel Gibson. Uh, Literally what he says. Literally says Mel Gibson made a movie about it. It's gross. <laughs> it's gross. He's kind of a big anti-Semite and you're Jewish right now. I go like on the way of, <laughs> out of Jewish into something else, whatever. He sucks, but I'm pretty sure it's an accurate movie. You're going to get just brutally crucified, but you have to let that happen or else it fucks up the rest of the stuff. Right. <laughs> it's it's almost like he stopped just short of being like, spoiler alert, Jesus. Shit's going to get wild. <laughs> <laughs> well, what he literally says is, don't, real quote from this movie, don't let them put a hurt on you, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he, also, he also says, don't get bummed out. <laughs> he, says that to Jesus. he tells him not to get bummed out oh to which jesus replies don't worry simon i'll be back oh yeah. my god and then simon and explicitly that's not even your movie yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's talking shit to jesus. oh man if this movie had ended with them melting down jesus in liquid metal he's given the thumbs up <laughs> that would have been pretty excellent so from from there we cut back to Ram 2, Eli. One. Ram two, 1. Ram 2. You're wrong. In his, it's branches of a time. You don't. You have to think about how there'll be new ones each time. Whatever. It's fine. <laughs> this Ram, the one who is in his underwear, is looking for Sabir some more. He, he's chasing after him, trying to find him. But who does he run into but Peter? <laughs> of right. course. <laughs> this is a very small town. <laughs> and he has this amazing moment with Peter where he's like, Peter. You stay here. Don't get crucified upside. And he's trying to pantomime it all for him. It's fucking yeah. amazing. <laughs> he's like, remember the ear thing, Peter? Remember? <laughs> <laughs> Play free bird, Peter. Play free bird. Right. But Peter, you know, doesn't speak English. So he just <laughs> kneels down and starts crying in confusion. <laughs> he has no idea what's going on. <laughs> All he can think of to do is be like, hey, man, you, you're, you're going to freak everybody out. Just wear one of my robes so you're not like mostly naked. That's weird. Oh, yeah. We see Ram's butt crack in this scene also. We do. Right. <laughs> and it should also be noted that Peter also can't cry. No, no. he cannot. No. <laughs> this is the Casablanca <laughs> of movies where people can't cry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it looks like the books of 1 Peter and 2 Peter in the Bible just turned into a terrified screed in all caps about a naked white giant in ancient Israel, <laughs> which is a, honestly a pretty big improvement on 1 Peter and 2 Peter. Horrible, horrible, slow epistles. And on that <laughs> note, we're going to take one more quick break, and then we'll be back for the, uh, for the I have no idea what's happening conclusion of Assassin 33 AD. Guys, we have to be careful that we don't change time or the Bible. It's fine. It's fine. How bad could it be? And lo, did Jesus' snow white friend approach him and say, This is a gun, Jesus. I'm about to pop a cap in the ass of those fools who come for your booty. And Jesus thanks him, but yea, he knew he must die, for it was the way of the Lord. Still an improvement, though, I guess, right? Yeah, I guess yeah, so. Yeah, that is true. True enough. And we're back. When we left off, there were two or three of every character, and <laughs> the movie completely gave up trying to keep track of it. So have I. <laughs> and now we're back in the present, and Ahmed is looking at a pile of dead bodies on his time machine platform, trying to figure out why his soldiers are all dead from <laughs> stick wounds and why the nerds that came back have gunshots. Yeah, and it, the scene opens with him going, 
they are dead. <laughs> I wanted one of the scientists to just be like, oh, you think? You think they're dead? <laughs> <laughs> they seem dead. Right. He also says, bullets and sticks. I wanted him to be like, maybe... Maybe a machine gun wielding tree ant. Am I, I'm, 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 I'm getting crazy here. <laughs> Shit was wild back then. <laughs> we need to go back in time and go to the first tree ant, and then we can fix that. The other thing we learn here is that one of his evil scientists is going to disable the Apple Watches now so that the nerds are stuck in the past. Yes. This was a good plan. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, that actually was a good plan. Meanwhile, Brant 2 Three. is waking up. God damn it. Whatever. Brant, <laughs> one of the stupid Brants is waking up. <laughs> he fell off that cliff before. Yep. But he survived. So he wakes up. He gets Sabir on the radio with his like Nextel bleep bleep radio that he has. And Sabir explains that everybody else is dead. They all got stick materialized to death and that he's alive. But he dropped his gun and he's pretty sure Ram has his gun now. Mm hmm. I literally forgot Brant was in this movie. <laughs> I did too. Me. I wrote the same thing. <laughs> the movie forgot. I was like, too. Oh, wait, this, they were like, oh, Brant. Oh, wait, this dude. <laughs> so from there, we cut back to Ram 2. One. Whatever. Ram something. <laughs> Going back to Amy something. Three. She's still in the full body <laughs> tourniquet, which Pants is tourniquet. Fine. It's keeping keeping her her alive. And he's comforting her that, don't worry, Jesus is going to get murdered as planned. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what a great way to comfort someone. Yeah. So he decides, okay, we need to go back to the lab to save your life because of the gunshot. And he tries to send him back and he realizes, oh no, our Apple Watch Fitbit things are deactivated. And she's like, okay, you didn't like secretly program a, a second MacGuffin so that the watch Why'd you put an the, off switch on our yeah, time MacGuffins? Why would you have that? <laughs> so now they're stuck in 33 AD for the moment. Yeah, I, I love how unpanicked Ram seems. <laughs> <laughs> he, yeah, right. He's just like, uh, I guess we should start looking for apartments here, babe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you this. I know about batteries, so I think it's going to go fucking great for us here. Let me... <laughs> right. So now Brant and Sabir are going to do some crucifixion recon. Oh they're my dressed God. up like ancient Israeli people. And they this scene, like, check it out. They're two feet taller and white and yeah. absolutely <laughs> nobody. I mean, to be fair, everyone in this background scene is white, but <laughs> accurately, this would have been a hell of a scene to watch. I know. He's basically like, here, put this on. You'll look more Middle Eastern. <laughs> like, uh, no, right. no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> so they go off to do some recon on the crucifixion. Immediately, Sabir steals a tomato from a fruit store. Like a dick. <laughs> like an asshole. The guy gets mad, calls over a Roman guard. Sabir shoots one of the Roman guards. There's a big fight, including during this fight, Sabir drops his functioning Apple Watch uh -huh. and some lady picks it up. I'm assuming that's Mary Magdalene. <laughs> With someone Mary. Jesus knew, she's definitely Jesus adjacent. Yeah. We're gonna find she out. Like Jesus's type, right? right. <laughs> but but there's two time Fitbits, and in the reachiest of reaches I have ever fucking seen in a Christian movie, the Roman guard, for no reason, wraps the gun, which is a time problem, in the Fitbit and sends it back. <laughs> it's just like, oh well, this. This will mess up the movie, so boom, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so with all those loose ends perfectly taken care of, we cut over to Jesus doing the, the classic thing. He's carrying his cross up to the crucifixion. And Simon, who was having that conversation with him earlier, oh my Simon's God. just walking along next <laughs> yeah. to him, wearing his tri-blend t-shirt. I know. Okay. So this is where I, this may be my favorite scene in the movie because this is where I realized that Simon, the jive talking silly scientist is going to be the Simon that raised Jesus to his feet twice during the stations of the cross. That's the one. But he won't talk biblically. He will say, real quote, yo, lay off Jesus. I know. 
<laughs> oh, I love it too. It was the most WWE entrance ever. Like Simon was literally like walking Jesus to the cross like he was Miss Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> They're about to hang Macho Man on the cross. <laughs> and, and the whole scene looks like a 30 second to Mars cover band. It's like, <laughs> it's, like a, it's like Jared Leto with a cross and then like the, the rest of the band encouraging, throwing stones. It's amazing. We also see something happening here that's supposed to be important. Ram is carrying Amy looking for a doctor from 33 yeah. AD to treat her gunshot <laughs> yeah. wound. Yeah. He's all, Anybody got a hatchet? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. I wanted What's so badly for him to find a Bronze Age doctor who just like makes her drink dirty water and he's like, oh yeah, she definitely cheated on you. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Her uterus fell right out. <laughs> and then we finally cut back to the actual crucifixion scene. They made it to Golgotha Hill. Sorry, Heath, it's so much worse than that. He's going around asking for a doctor and they send him to Golgotha. They're like, oh, he probably right. wants Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, they don't speak English. So they're just like, I don't know, man. What What are you saying? Ba here, Okay, everybody's basically going to this thing today. So you might as well come with us. We're going to this thing. <laughs> yeah, it's the big event Crucifixion. Yeah, bring Amy and her kids. <laughs> <laughs> so Ram is there watching the crucifixion. And he starts yelling at Jesus, being like, hey, I know you're kind of tied up there with your whole thing, but can you heal my fucking girlfriend, yeah. asshole? Yeah, he was like, I was so close to fucking this <laughs> He heckles Jesus on the cross. This movie contains a scene where the protagonist heckles Jesus on the cross. Yep. We also see that Sabir and Brant are here. Yes. They are those two thieves that are getting crucified yeah. next to Jesus. Yeah. T-shirt crucifixion, y'all. <laughs> so we get a little bit of Brant. He kind of breaks down. We get Brant asking for forgiveness at the last second and Jesus being like, yeah, this is genuine. This is not, you know, last ditch crucifix related. I forgive you. This is right. cool. <laughs> and Ram hears this happen and he's like, are you fucking kidding me? He tried to kill you. He didn't shot my girlfriend. You're the worst. I hate you. Oh, yeah, he tells him what's you up. You suck. Also, we should point out that they're they're being accurate here, so they do the thing where Jesus has to pull himself up to speak, but it just makes it super slow. So he's like, Jesus, why can't you heal Amy? Uh, okay, you know what? I'm, I can't do the pull-up. I'm going to do the flexed arm hang and give you the same speech. Okay, we yeah, go. It's, <laughs> it took an uncomfortable <laughs> amount of time. I was expecting Jesus to finally pull his head up and be like, uh, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> but Jesus finally lands on a deal for Ram. He says, <laughs> I'll save Amy if you forgive Brant. Said the son of God. Yep. Amy and Brant were two words that he said while on the crucifix. Yeah, he, he dropped Amy, the biblical name <laughs> Amy. I guess we should be lucky that the Bible isn't more accurate. <laughs> right. But Ram's like, fuck that. No, absolutely not. I'm not doing that. This is ridiculous. You, you understand how this is like crazy confusing for your whole religion forever, right? This is dumb. Whatever. And he storms off with Amy in his arms, dying of a gunshot wound. Mm -hmm. So he, he carries Amy around for a while and eventually runs into Simon, still wearing his T-shirt. And by the way, as they're chatting, the sun goes out. Just so that these characters can be like, <laughs> yeah, the Bible sure is accurate. <laughs> right. And by the way, like, this has not convinced Ram, right? Simon turns to Ram and he's like, I mean, he did speak English. And he's like, whatever. He didn't heal my girlfriend. He's just a guy. Yeah. He had brain duolingo. You heard it. I love that, that. That became such a sticking point, too, where it's like out of everything else that's like prophecy coming true while they are there, they're seeing prophecy unfold in real time. Dude's still stuck on. He's got to be real, man. He spoke English. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and then we get a really quick cut back to Ahmed. He sees the gun and the Apple Watch show back up at the lab that got sent there <laughs> to fix the script by the, the Roman guard. Mm -hmm. And he's like, all right, I got a plan. I'm going to go back in time now. I'm going to hide in the cave 
where they have Jesus's tomb and I'm going to kill everyone when they show up and try to steal Jesus's body. Because, yeah. of course, resurrections are silly and this makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> so he appears in that cave and he's <laughs> the first thing he does, Ahmed pokes the Shroud of Turin with his assault <laughs> rifle being like, yup, yup, <laughs> Jesus. <Those trucks. laughs> and then we cut over to Ram doing more math, physics stuff in the sand with a stick. And it's talking so, to Simon. It's so good. This conversation is so meaningless, but he's just like complaining about Jesus like he's the guy everyone hates at work. He's like, yeah. stupid Jesus wants forgiveness. You forgive Brandon. Stupid. Won't save my girlfriend. <laughs> and then Simon, Simon's like, actually, I think she's kind of tight, you know, when you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> also, did you just say that he told you to forgive somebody for murdering in the language of English? <laughs> I feel like that needs to be part of your calculation. Nah, right? Brain Duolingo. Brain Duolingo. <laughs> <laughs> and then Amy wakes up because, again, that body tourniquet is doing great. And she's like, did, the, did Jesus get crucified? Did it work out? Did you guys nail it? And Simon's like, yep, yep, he got crucified. He drowned in his own blood right there on the cross. And she's like, I'm so Sweet. happy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Right? And she says, all right, well, you got to take me to his tomb. I want to watch the resurrection because it's going to be beautiful. She wants to sightsee like they're in fucking Provence. <laughs> Is there like a Groupon for that maybe we could get? Like last minute? I don't know. She makes him wake up really early to do a walking tour of Jesus's tomb. Ooh. Also, there's a, <laughs> Not really a morning person. There's a great moment where Amy says to Simon, oh my God, you're bloody. And he's like, this is actually Jesus's blood. <laughs> he sounds yeah. so proud of it. <laughs> no big deal. Jesus, you know. Uh, maybe you've heard of him. Died in my arms. Kind of a big deal. He's Jesus. He's, he's Jewish. He's from Jerusalem. He's from New York. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is English speaking Jesus' blood right here. <laughs> right. So they decide they're going to go watch the resurrection. And back in the cave, we see Ahmed. He Was he taking DNA from Jesus? Yep. yep. In order to make an army of clones? Oh, uh, don't tease me because I was so hoping this movie was going to finish with them having to fight a bunch of evil <laughs> Jesus clones. Yes! Thank you. That's an amazing uh, movie. They had such a good twist here they could have done. It's the only know, promise the movie Jesus. makes that it doesn't deliver on. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> could have been so cool. It'd be weird if they just found out Jesus was the real killer of Nicole Simpson and Ron Goldman. <laughs> <laughs> We saw, oh my God, it matches the white Bronco. <laughs> what are the odds of this? Right. So many sequels. <laughs> so Ahmed's taking the DNA sample. He grabs it. And then all of a sudden, there's a big earthquake. And the cave just explodes open. And Amy and Simon and, and Ram watch this happening. And Amy's like, he is risen. It's so beautiful. There's a weird moment where I think Ram starts getting jealous. Like, I think he starts thinking, like, Amy low-key wants to fuck Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> she definitely where does. Like, yeah, yeah, she's into it. Like, there's hard eyes for days. Oh, for sure. <laughs> right, so they decide to go into the cave and check it out. And they, they realize that Ahmed has stolen the body of Jesus and then teleported, time-ported back to, to the present. And they, they realize he left... Glow sticks in the he cave. Left his glow he sticks. showed up with glow sticks to like light the cave that he knew he was going to be in. And they're like, "All right, we better clean up these glow sticks, or the plot won't make sense." We'll <laughs> oh, right, like glow sticks, telltale sign. Oh man, but <laughs> let's just be real. If they had left those glow sticks, and there'd been the part where the women who go into the cave do like spin some ploy or something to commemorate Jesus's death, <laughs> I think Jesus would have wanted this rave. <laughs> Uh, but Ahmed did not steal Jesus's body. Jesus has risen from the dead and he goes and tells Amy via extended metaphor that she's a sheep. Yeah. She says, can you heal me then? Because, you know, as you can see, I'm dying of a gunshot wound. If you don't mind, just, you know, you're resurrected. You can do things like that. And <laughs> immediately the response is like, can I heal you? Imagine a guy with a hundred sheep. Yeah. He and he loses either. one sheep. That's that's bad. And she's like, 
Um, okay, I'm just gonna say it one more time. Can you heal me? <laughs> heal me. Heal just me now. Quick. It's probably be hella easy for you. <laughs> and and he's like, no, <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> right we also get a funny moment here where Amy's like super presumptuous. She's like, okay, so you're not gonna heal me. Fine, whatever. That sheep metaphor. Are you saying you did this whole thing to save my soul? Just me? And he's like, oh no, wow, okay, nope. awkward. Um, Definitely not that. Brant's soul. They, this is. I, I, I'm saving the soul of the guy who shot you. Try to try to pay attention. <laughs> oh, the guy yeah. who murdered yeah. me. Uh, <laughs> came all the way back to the That's past. That's our cold world. <laughs> <laughs> right. So Jesus and Amy finish up their little conversation, and now we're gonna watch Jesus's girlfriends show up in that cave, and they find Ram and Simon just finishing up with the glow sticks and they're like, oh, it's cool. He, he resurrected that. That happened. Oh, you, you don't, you don't speak English, do you? <laughs> yeah. So he, instead of just like giving a regular sign language of like, Jesus is not here. He starts uh, like doing an air traffic controller. Like Jesus has, <laughs> he's risen. He has flown out of the cave. <laughs> he is currently on his way. This movie Never stop giving giving the gifts. You guys want to rave a little bit? You want to like pour it up with these glow sticks? What yeah. are you doing? Yeah, he's all, don't drink them though. Who's got they Molly? Are poison. <laughs> <laughs> right. So they get done with Jesus' girlfriends. They go back to Amy, but they find that she's dead. Dead AF. Amy is gone. Jesus let her die. <laughs> Jesus let her yeah. die. This dude, this dude is going to be living. <laughs> You probably should have forgave that dude. And the ladies from the cave come <laughs> over and they're like, hey, this might be a bad time, but is this your time Fitbit? <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. yeah. They follow him out and they're like, we had this Apple watch. It's probably useful to you. <laughs> Great. Yeah. They land on, okay, we put both of our wrists through this one watch. Friendship and we bracelet. both poof back to the present. <laughs> and it works. But there's security guys right there. Simon does have the one gun, so he, he shoots him, but he gets shot at the same time. Yeah. So you remember the MacGuffin an hour and a half ago where he no. said, hey, just say Alpha Beta Einstein, send me back to save my mom and dad. No, neither does anyone else in this movie, but he's going <laughs> to use right. that now <laughs> to go back in time. He's going to go back in time to before his parents were killed and he invented time travel. So he is going to make himself, depending on your numbering system, Ram three or four, I think it's four. <laughs> to go back in time and yeah. stop Ram one from inventing time travel and his parents dying. But as soon as he leaves, he needs Simon to shoot the computers. So there's not a Ahmed five or Ahmed six, you know? Right. So Ram starts to run off to go do his new plan to go back in time one more time. But Simon stops him and he's like, hold on just a real quick before you go. You think Jesus is legit? Yeah. Yeah, no, he, busts it out. he says it again. He busts <laughs> it out one more time. He's like, but, but for real though, he spoke English. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. Jesus is legit. You have a bunch of gunshots in your body right now. Grand plan's working out great. Yep, bye. <laughs> oh my God. So security runs in and they shoot Simon, but he, he's able to shoot the time machine just in time to destroy it right after Ram blasts himself back into the near past right before his parents died, just in time. Correct. Okay. And Ram runs into the building, finds that murder viewing room where his mom and dad are about to get killed, and he shoots this, the henchmen who are about to shoot his parents just in time and saves them. Yep. Oh, yeah. And he is carrying, he is working a machine gun. <laughs> like he is a fucking trained Navy SEAL. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Like, he is literally just riddling these people with bullets. <laughs> and then he runs in, having saved his parents, and he's like, ah, I created a time machine. He used it to kill Jesus. Okay, bye. <laughs> I know. He's like, this story is incredible. <laughs> hey, uh, Ram, just really quick. No questions, please. Gotta go. And he's out. Yeah. And this is where Ahmed calls Brant one on the radio. Ahmed's back in the present now in the lab building as well. Mm -hmm. And he calls Brant, who was moping in that hallway in his first timeline. Where he said he wasn't the villain, yes. Right, so he's still the security guy on Ahmed's team. 
Ahmed needs him to come prevent Ram from killing him because he's being chased by Ram now. Yes, and we should Ram point out four. Ram 4 chases Ahmed into his office, Ahmed 2 technically, into his office, and then Ahmed is hiding somewhere in the office when Brand shows up. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. And this is, of course, the big forgiveness scene with Brand, right? He take he like knocks away Brand's gun and Brand's like, hey, look. And Ram is like, you killed Jesus and then killed my girlfriend and then died on the cross next to Jesus. And he's like, OK, none of that happened in this timeline. And he's like, oh, oh, no. well, okay. I forgive you. Also, were you two even saying girlfriend, boyfriend? I feel like you weren't even there yet. Were you there? <laughs> I don't think you were there. Uh, it seems like you guys moved kind of fast. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is where he forgives Brand and, and sets the gun down. And I just wrote in my notes, if he if Brand had then grabbed the gun and shot Ram in the face, this would be my favorite movie. I mean, it's already oh, my cool. favorite movie for so many reasons. I forgive you. I win. Nope. Got shot in the face. Lost. Atheism <laughs> wins. Credits. Yes, that would have been fan fucking tastic. Also, notice Jesus did not ask him to forgive the Muslim guy. Just Bran. Yeah. He's like, he was one of us before. This Muslim guy seems like a lost cop. <laughs> <laughs> He's never going to believe in Jesus. <laughs> right. And just at that moment, mom and dad now show up in Ahmed's office also where this is all happening. <laughs> and Ram's kind of embarrassed. He's like, mom, dad, I'm doing him oh. time machine murder. <laughs> Gah. Get out of here. <laughs> he, does. He's, he does. He's so mad that his parents showed up. And just as the parents show up, more security guards and Ahmed all show up at the same time. The guards come in with a gun to Amy One's head, I think, as a hostage. Fuck me if I know. Yeah, I think this might be an OG Amy. <laughs> the, oh, yeah, I think this might be OG Amy. And this and Ahmed at the same time, <laughs> he pops up from behind the desk. That's where, like, that's where he's he was all hiding behind his desk the entire time. Like, there was a whole forgiveness scene. Where he was like, you murdered her. And he's like, it wasn't me. And he's like, I forgive you. And they embrace his brothers. And we are now to believe that Ahmed was behind that desk the whole time being like, okay, now's a bad time to pop out. I'm going to yeah, I'm gonna let them, let them have this moment. <laughs> <laughs> so Ram gets shot here by Ahmed. But as he's dying, he explains like, all right, whatever. I mean, one of my other versions is just going to go back in time again. And I'm going to fix this. So now Ahmed needs the codes to hack into the time travel the computer codes. software yep. so that he could create his own second version of the time machine. Exactly. And he, this is where he does the six count. And he's like, I'm going to shoot Amy in the knee, six, five, and Ram stops him. And he makes up or actually starts hearing the voice of a woman. Oh my God. This is, so this is supposed to be Heidi Montag's character sending a message through Ram to Brand that he's got to switch what? sides and be a good guy now. Just to be clear, she, she did She's not do that. Heaven. Yeah, she did not do that when he shot Jesus Christ of Nazareth in the face. That would have been helpful. <laughs> I love it. I also love that Brand says to Ram, is the voice you hear Diane? And he's like, <laughs> Who? Fuck if I know, dude. Like, <laughs> Didn't introduce herself. Fuck, it, it sounded like a bad British accent. I thought it was maybe Madonna. <laughs> I, think, uh, I don't know. Heidi Montag from The Hills. Have you seen <laughs> The Hills? Yeah, I don't Laguna Beach. <laughs> but the voice told Ram, be a hero. That was just a general message for somebody. And Brant hears this, assumes it must be his wife in heaven. And he flips to the good team and starts shooting the bad guy guards here. Yeah, but he gets shot too. Oh yeah, he does a full on fucking young gun shit. Mm -hmm. And then Ram grabs a knife off of Ahmed's desk yep. and stabs Ahmed in the back and then jumps on top of him and starts to stab him in like the throat to kill him. Yeah, and does like yeah. the, the fucking saving Private Ryan slow knife stab. And everyone in the movie is like, ooh, it's, it's not super protagonist-y huh. of you. <laughs> right. And I love this line here. Ahmed realizes a great loophole. He's like, hey, man, um, you shouldn't kill me. I, I think you should really forgive me like you did with Brant, like Jesus said. Right. <laughs> they have to be like, 
All right, fuck. That's that's pretty solid. Uh, what if we go back in time and change Jesus's message to have a, a proviso for bad guys killing? <laughs> right. I love it because Ram is like, it's this weird thing he does where he's like, forgive you. Right. How about die? <laughs> but, then he like, but then he like explains that like, well, there's probably other versions of you in the multiverse. So take solace in that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is like science is weird. So who knows what's going to happen. <laughs> and then the last thing that happens with Brant here, he's about to die or no, he's not quite going to die, but he's shot. And he tells them, grab my radio, press the button. And he calls his security team that's somewhere in the building. And he explains, okay, all, of, all the Muslim guys are actually bad guys. Go, go shoot them. I'm on the good team now. They tried to murder Jesus Christ. I'll explain later. But what's so amazing is he has to do it in dying guy talk. And the movie's so convoluted. He's like, listen, Ram went back in time to save himself from the time travelers who went Back in time to kill Jesus before being stopped. You know what? Brown people are bad. Blah. Yeah. He's like on his dying breath and giving full names, like security out outline codes. He's like, this is Ahmed Amakbar. Uh, <laughs> like, I'm like, holy shit, he's so succinct as he's dying. Hold on, sorry. Ahmed 3 is actually the one who is, I'm 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 dying here, but I really need to explain. Ahmed 2 was already blipped out. Shit. Just, yeah, uh, g the, kill the Muslim guys. Kill the Muslim guys. Uh, I should have just said that from the whole time. So the, the security guards start a gunfight with the evil security guards, and the good guys win the gunfight, and then Ram won? 18, three is here. One of the Rams is here to see dying Ram four. So it's all good. He's going to fix things. Yep. He shows up to be like, oh man, what an adventure. And you literally see Ram 47 or whoever he is be like, nope, you don't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At this point, everyone's so confused. <laughs> no idea, including me. Baffled. Anyway. Uh, from there, we cut to three months later. I guess there was oh, a happy I, ending. I love this ending so much. I don't know. Whatever. It's three months later, and all the nerds from the team, not clear which number, are hanging out in Ram's parents' basement, and they're going to do one more time machine thing. He's, he's put together a new one, and he's going to fix something. Okay. So what they do, this is so fucking good, because it means how little they understand about their own fucking movie. They send him back in time to keep Brand's family from dying in that car crash by having a stop sign and getting hit, <laughs> hit by the truck Incredible. instead. <laughs> Why not just like go back a little bit before that and be like, hey, you're going to drive a truck into somebody? Nope. Just like hang out for an hour. I have to go. get hit by a truck in this timeline. Right. Oh, my God. It's so trite. And then the stop sign he uses has a note that's like, hey, I'm about to invent time travel in a lab full of Muslim terrorists. Wait, let me back up. <laughs> right. They they tied it up in a pretty little bow. Wow. <laughs> it would have been great if Brant just like threw away the notes and was like, that's weird. Notes. I don't know. Okay. Time for work. <laughs> all creepy. Anywho. Okay. <laughs> we need to talk about the credits because then the credits come up, right? During the credits of this movie, they play the rest of this movie. <laughs> yeah. Not just a <laughs> teaser of the next movie, because they are very much setting themselves up for a sequel, which I will talk about in a second. But literally, the credits start to roll. And on the other side, we see what happens after Brand tells the FBI. We see them, like, fighting the terrorists and getting shot and traveling into the future to save Brand. It's fucking amazing. Yeah, it's it's like I thought it was going to be like a gag reel. But I'm like, <laughs> so did I? I'm like, these are actual like scenes. Yeah, <laughs> no one's no one's la no one's laughing. Yeah, for some reason they just decided to accompany the credits with the rest of the movie. Okay, so what happened is Ram sent himself and Amy into thir thirty years into the future to mm -hmm. a hospital. Yes, 
And as soon as they materialize there, a bunch of people who know what time travel is, they say something like, okay, we need to find out why the Antichrist wants these people. Well, they grab their wrists. They go, no marking chip. And then they go, all right, we need to figure out what the Antichrist wants with them. Well, it's okay. pretty fucking great. Unbelievable. So that means God's plan the whole time was to have the apocalypse happen and have the Antichrist take over the earth to punish all the heathens and then some time travel stuff after that, <laughs> before that, during, in it. Correct. Smashed through it. Okay. Unreal. What the fuck? All right, you know what? Th that's my last question before we wrap it up. What the fuck happened? Who, <laughs> who won the movie? Ooh. Um, I think Simon won. <laughs> yeah, okay. Simon, two votes. That, that's a good answer. <laughs> yeah. All right. He made it into the Bible. Because he got to die. No idea what they're going for there. I cannot wait for that sequel, though. I cannot wait. All right. Well, I guess that does it for our review of Assassin 33 AD, but that's not going to do it for the whole episode just yet because we still need to get you excited to revel in our pain again next week. So, Eli, what's on deck? Signs. Mel Gibson, M. Night Shyamalan. A religious movie. Trust us. This is a religious movie. Oh, it is. He plays like a retired minister. We're dealing with like signs of the... We'll, we'll get there. There's aliens. There's religion. It's going to be great. So with that to look forward to, we'll bring episode 246 to a merciful close. Huge thanks to Johnny Taylor for joining us. And if anyone wants to hear more of your stuff, where should they go? Well, thanks for having me. Super fun. Check out my albums on Spotify or Sirius Satellite Radio. Uh, watch a weekly show I do on the interview uh, interview comedians on the Punchline Instagram channel. And uh, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Hipsterocracy. And uh, thanks again for having me. Super fun. <laughs> all right. It was a pleasure. And as usual, huge thanks to our Patreon donors for all the generosity. If you'd like to help support the show, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful. And that'll get you early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us out by leaving us good reviews in review spots and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, The Skeptocrat, and D&D Minus, available in all the podcast places. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of People Drafts on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Johnny Taylor and Eli Bosnick, I'm Heath Enright. I promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House. Breakfast Club Plus. Animal House Club. Ram and Amy go on to get married. They have one child. They name him Damien. <laughs> <laughs> the Antichrist went back in time to stop himself from stopping Ram before Ram could go stop him, stop, stop, time travel, stop, stop. <laughs> and then the Antichrist used the time machine to give us 2020. <laughs> so real. Right? Yeah. Green M and M's. Butt pills. Exactly. Right. Yeah. It's uh. Did you? But did pills. you mean butt pills? Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure. I was like, Eli would spell butt. Either way. <laughs> he knows how to spell butt. He puts green M&Ms in his ass. That, I mean, it's not clear. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.